Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin with breaking news tonight. One person is dead after a shooting in Waterbury. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carmen Chow. And now the search is on for a suspect. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live in Waterbury with what we know about the investigation. Jake. Well, Carmen, tonight police are still trying to understand what led up to that deadly shooting and investigators not releasing many details about a possible suspect. Just after four Saturday afternoon, Waterbury police were called to the 400 block of West Main Street on reports of a shooting. When officers arrived, they found a man with a gunshot wound to the neck. He was taken to Waterbury Hospital where he died from his injuries. Police blocking off the road for several hours as police investigated a parking lot and an alley across the street. This area is obviously really becoming dangerous, more dangerous every day. A woman who lives in the area who did not want to go on camera or be identified said this is not the first time something like this has happened in this neighborhood. It's been from what I read and hear and everything happening I want to say they eight times in this area within a month. That's a lot. It's very scary. Daryl Copeland, who leads an anti-violence organization in Waterbury, says he's devastated by the news of another shooting in his city. It gets frustrating because, again, we, we can't stop gun violence, but we can bring more of an awareness and have more dialogue and communication. Uh, about the problem, urging the community to come together and find solutions to gun violence. My recommendation to everyone that lives in a neighborhood that we feel that is unsafe is to not be afraid and be silent. Um, if things are kept in silence, that's when they can continue to fester. But if we can bring light to situations by just having conversation, getting more people involved to talk about um, what's happening in our neighborhoods and what's needed. And anyone with information on this case is asked to call Waterbury Police. Live in Waterbury, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Jake, thank you. New information tonight about a deadly crash in Nagatuck involving a car and several motorcycles. Police now identifying the motorcyclist who was killed as Travis LaRoe. Police saying LaRoe was hit when a car traveling southbound on New Haven Road crossed into the northbound lane, and that's when the car sideswiped another car and hit LaRoe's motorcycle along with a second motorcycle. Police say a third motorcycle also crashed while trying to avoid the collision. The the driver of the second motorcycle was taken to the hospital and is in critical but stable condition. The third motorcyclist and the driver of the car had minor injuries. Now to the weather watch a cloudy start to the weekend with a few showers here and there, but more importantly, will it be nice for Father's Day tomorrow? Let's toss it over to meteorologist Ryan Breton. Hey Ryan. Carmen, it will be. We have a pretty good forecast coming up tomorrow, but today was pretty interesting. In some places it poured for a while and in other places it was almost completely dry. It's all because of a big storm system sitting and swirling to our north. A very wet day just to our north up over northern New England and now some of that more widespread rain is moving into the eastern half of the state with some light rain coming down toward Middletown. A bit steadier rain though in eastern and southeastern Connecticut uh, coming out of Ledger headed into Stonington right now and to the north as well in the quiet corner. We have some steady light rain falling at the moment from Killingly over to Wyndham. So over the next 12 hours. There still will be a few showers around, but we'll start to dry things up by tomorrow morning. Low temperatures tonight falling into the 50s to around 60 across the state. And then tomorrow, Father's Day is a mostly dry day. Morning temperatures in the 60s, afternoon highs in the 70s, but just an isolated shower possible. But I think overall, a pretty good day coming up for any outdoor plants. We'll take a look at when some heat arrives in the seven day forecast coming up in just a little while. Ryan, thank you. New tonight, one person is dead after a crash involving a tractor trailer in the Elm City. Police say 36 year old Ruben Roca El Mejia Gonzalez was driving on LT Grasso Boulevard in New Haven when he rear ended a tractor trailer that was waiting in a left turn lane. He was ejected from his car because of the impact and pronounced dead on the scene. Anyone with information on the crash should call police.
To Vernon now, where state police responded to a street takeover. Here's the image they posted just last night to all of their social media. This taking place near the I-84 commuter lot near exit 64 and 65. Street takeovers have been on the rise across the state over the past few weeks. If you see a street takeover, get to safety and call police immediately. The search continues tonight for the suspect involved in a fatal hit and run in the capital city. Police say 49 year old Jose Concepcion was hit just after 11 a.m. yesterday near Edward Street and Albany Avenue. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. And take a look at your screen here. Harford police are looking for this black infinity that has a shattered windshield and dented hood. The car has a Connecticut plates with a license number of BF 54937. If you have seen that car or have any information about this crash, you're asked to call Harford police. The fish market in Bloomfield is picking up the pieces tonight after a car drove into the building. Police say a woman tried to hit her brakes, but instead drove into the businesses on Blue Hills Avenue. No injuries were reported. We are told the Paradise Restaurant next door to the fish market was not impacted and remained open today. A presidential visit to Connecticut. President Joe Biden came to our state to speak at the gun safety summit yesterday, an event that brought leaders, advocates and victims together. Fox 61's Jen Bernstein has a recap of the day. President Biden front and center at the National Safer Community Summit at the University of Hartford, joined by Connecticut leaders and gun safety advocates from here and across the country. For those who say they're concerned about crime, you can't deal with crime without dealing with gun violence. It's a simple proposition. The summit bringing together those who've dealt with its painful impact, fighting for change. My identity is reduced to three words, Sandy Hook mom. The event highlighting a state that's enacted some of the strictest gun laws in the nation after the Sandy Hook school shooting. Governor Ned Lamont just days ago signing another comprehensive bipartisan gun bill into law. The summit held to mark the one year anniversary of the passage of a large scale federal gun safety bill. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, a leading voice for it in Congress. Last year, this month, Congress passed the first major gun safety bill in 30 years, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. President Biden saying more needs to be done, calling for an assault weapons ban. Never bow, never bend, never yield, never kneel. We never will on this issue. Never, never, never. But the visit was not without criticism. Protesters making their voices heard outside of the event. Criminals don't carry guns. Criminals don't telegraph that they're going to commit crimes. This law is against um, law-abiding citizens. Some Connecticut Republican leaders also bringing issue with the location of the event, saying it should have been in one of Connecticut's inner cities where gun violence is rampant. It's simply about optics and to try to make fee people feel good. It's not going to do one thing to solve the problem that we see in Hartford and around the state and around this country. And following the event in Hartford, the president drove back to Bradley International Airport to fly to Greenwich, Connecticut, as he raises money for his reelection campaign. One day after his stop in Connecticut, President Biden is rallying in his home state. Fox's Alexandria Hoff reports from Philadelphia. We're the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. President Biden returning to his home state on Saturday for his first official campaign rally. This re-election debut is an appeal to working Americans, union workers specifically. The president addressing AFL-CIO members in Philadelphia after the powerful group endorsed the Biden-Harris ticket, the earliest endorsement in their history. It comes as Republican candidates have been stepping up their attacks on the president's age, suggesting his physical condition is the reason we haven't seen him out on the campaign trail until now. Folks, I'm looking forward to this campaign. I want you to know why. Because you've got a story to tell. We've got a story to tell. We've got a record to run on. And most importantly, we're not only changing this country, 
We're transforming it. Meanwhile, on the Republican side, attacks against the current frontrunner, former President Trump, are getting sharper following his indictment on federal charges. Most candidates are repeating Trump's claim that the charges are politically motivated, but they're increasingly criticizing the conduct that landed the former president in hot water. I would have made different judgments than Trump did. A bad judgment is not the same thing as a crime. But I'm in this race for a reason. Before today's rally, President Biden took an aerial tour of the collapsed portion of Interstate 95, where a temporary roadway is now being built out of recycled materials. In Philadelphia, Alexandria Hoff, Fox News.